What do you need to learn in order to do something like this? Or this? Or even something like this? Welcome to DevWorld, my name is Sam. When I started programming, I had no idea what actually is needed in order to complete a program or a web application or even a website hand-coded. So not something you would do, let's say, with Wix or something like that. So that's what I'm going to talk about in this video. We will cover the 33 most important things you have to know in order to be a programmer or what I'm going to talk about, especially kind of a web designer or front-end developer. So I'll try to do that rapid fire. I have my list in this side. So let's just start with the first point. And of course, this is very easy. You need to know HTML, CSS, and with CSS, you need at least to know which CSS frameworks to choose. So CSM, so CSS frameworks like Bootstrap, Balma, or even something like Tailwind. So you don't need to know all of them in detail, but at least you have to know what exactly they do and what the pros and cons are of that. Then of course the next in the front-end developer, web design and developer stack is JavaScript. So you need to know JavaScript quite well, not really just for web design, but especially for web applications. And there you need to know the different flavors. So what's the difference between ES5 and ES6 and how to compile, so uh, convert ES5 code to ES6 code with something that's called Babel. Again, you don't need to know how ba Babel exactly works, but you need to know what Babel does. So that's really important. Then the next thing is how to bundle your files. So how to minify, bundle them. So you usually bundle your JavaScript file and your CSS files uh, before you deploy a website. So you need to know how to do that and why it's exactly needed. Then, of course, if you want to do that, you most probably want to do that with some kind of tool, which uh, you want to surely look into what is Gulp, what is something like Parcel, or even you know should know a little bit about what is Webpack and how to configure Webpack. Then the next thing is you surely want to know, especially in regards to designing websites, how to host a website. So something if you just want to host it on a normal server or even some kind of serverless options. Then the next thing, surely, if you want to work as a web designer, you would need to know how to set up an email client and how to connect, let's say, contact forms on your website with the email client of maybe your, uh, your own website, so your own email address or especially the email address of your client. Then something which is very, very important to know is which tool to use as, again, re in regards to designing websites. So most of the time it's just a quite a bad idea to, to try to um, develop a website with just plain HTML, CSS and JavaScript. So you should know what the advantages and disadvantages are of something like Wix, Weebly, Squarespace and of course you don't need to know any platform or every platform but you should need to uh, you should know what the pros and cons are and for which application or for which um, kind of use case WordPress is better than Wix and the other way around and all of that. So you should know that. And then also something I think is quite neglected. You should have at least basic marketing and sales knowledge. So most of the time if we develop websites or create websites for clients or even for ourselves, it's usually 90% of time uh, of times a website is a sales tool. So I see time and time again of websites that are created by amazing designers but just not with any kind of marketing or sales background. So now I'll talk mostly about how to create a website. Let's go into a little bit further in front-end development, which is surely web applications. So there, most of the time, if you build a web application like uh, an accounting program or something like that, JavaScript, plain JavaScript won't cut it. Of course you can do it, but it's just way, way easier if you learn a framework. So most probably want to learn one of the big threes, so React, Angular or Vue. So that's really very, very important if you want to go from web designer to web or front-end developer. Then you surely want to know uh, about Node.js. You don't really have to know how to configure a server with Node, but at least you want to install Node and know how to download packages. And then another important skill is how to really figure out what packages you should download, what is out there, what are different tools that you can use for your website and which to avoid. So is the plugin or the package you want to download big enough? Are they, is, it, is it maintained well enough? So that's surely a skill you have to acquire. 
then you have to know at least a little bit how to navigate the terminal and another thing is also you most probably want to learn a little bit of regex so regular expressions so this is surely good if you would look into that because it can usually you should try to avoid it but sometimes if you need to use regular expressions it's just very very it comes very very handy if you know how it works then the next thing of course is git and github for version control so if you have just even a little project it's very very important to have some somewhere where you have your code saved in an organized fashion then the next thing is what you surely want to know is how to communicate with a restful api so with the rest api how to use put post delete get requests all of the good stuff how to really implement that into your front end application then the next thing is surely you want to know json so json is usually the file type used for restful api so you want to know what's the difference between um, a json object and a regular javascript object and you want to surely know how exactly that works then you surely want to know your um, code editor very well i think in most cases if you're a front-end developer i would choose visual studio code any day so you want to know how that exactly works to be more efficient in writing your code then we're speaking about being more efficient you want to know the best extensions you want to use with visual studio code then you want to of course know how to host your application so you just you don't want to have it on your local machine all the time you want to put it on in on uh, in the world wide web uh, and there are some solutions like netlify aws google cloud you want to know the differences between them and how to at least with one of them how to host your application and then of course a very important topic is how to google so you want to be a googling expert because google is your best friend as a programmer then a little bit more advanced so if you master that you're already well up to speed how to build an application how to deploy that how to structure your project and all of that a little bit more advanced topics could be how static site generators work so you don't have to know exactly how they work in the back end but at least you should know uh, what options are out there so let's say Gatsby or Next or even other ones and you want to know what exactly they do and how you can build a static website with those static site generators then a the next thing which is surely advanced and is even beyond the front just the front end developer but the issue is if you're just a front-end developer you're never really able to build a whole application yourself because there's always the part missing of the server and you can build out your server with something like node or php or python or something like that but of course that needs a lot of time and you need to re uh, acquire a lot of knowledge uh, something i found which is very very helpful is called software as a service so firebase even aws has some uh, project i always forget the name about uh, of aws um, which is the ser a server as a service um, but that comes in very very handy it's very very easy to implement and you are able to build a full stack application without having to go so you surely need uh, the knowledge how to implement that but it's way way less than how to learn python and creating a server with python for example but if you are able to build your server yourself then you surely want to know how to deploy that with something like heroku or there are even other um, uh, platforms out there you can deploy a full stack application then another advanced thing is learning GraphQL. So we talked about, already talked about RESTful APIs. GraphQL is just like that, but let's say a little bit more advanced. So where you can talk to a database with your client side application. Um, then application testing. So if you have a really big project or you're working on a big project, you want to learn something like Jest or Mocha or something like that, that you really can test your application. So usually that means that you, for every component you have or every function you have, you have a separate test function to test that component. So usually for smaller or even mid-sized application, that's not required, but for bigger application, that's surely, um, yeah, almost mandatory to have something like that. And then the last point is to learn TypeScript. This is just something I am gonna learn in the next couple of weeks because I think it's just a big, big add-on on top of your JavaScript and React kind of knowledge and it will elevate your, the quality of your code even further if you know what TypeScript is. So as I said, the advanced topics are not really required to be able to do or to create a web project. 
if that is a website or a web application, but it's surely gonna advance you even further because yeah, that's called advanced, right? Um, yes, I think these were, I hope at the end of the day, were 33 um, points I had here, which are surely important if you wanna be a front-end developer and create websites and web applications. Again, I hope this video helped as always. If you wanna see more videos like that, don't forget to subscribe. I would really appreciate a like if you like this video. And if you have any comments or any kind of things you wanna mention in the comment section down below, I appreciate any comment I get there. And yeah, I hope to see you in the next video.